Hello everyone, welcome to Florida Spring Freediving Adventures. My name is Mark Thompson and I'm a certified master freediver. And today's video is going to be on gear, freediving gear. I'm going to cover the basics, what you should have and what you can get to help your freediving get better. And uh, right now we're actually walking to one of my favorite spots. I don't like to name this spot because for a few reasons, it's kind of dangerous because we're in the middle of the swamp as you can see. And another reason, this spring really isn't that big. So it gets overcrowded sometimes pretty bad. And that's why I usually free dive on the weekdays instead of the weekends now. I was able to get lucky enough to switch my scheduling around. Yeah, it's a little harder to get dive buddies on the weekdays, but I'm able to make do so far. And if I can't get a dive buddy, I just won't dive. It's point blank about it because if you black out when you're diving by yourself, you will die. Especially if you're at depth. Let alone at the top of the water, you're going to black out. And you're just going to fall limp and just drown. I mean, sad to say, this is an extreme sport. And uh, it can happen. But if you got a certified free diver with you, a good dive buddy that knows the protocols... On safety and bringing people back on recoveries if you black out of depth or or whatnot you won't really have too much to worry about because it's not that dangerous if you have someone else diving with you know what they're doing that's why it's good to get certified people at least a level one but getting the uh, level two level three certifications you'd be surprised what you'll learn there's really great instructors out there like Dale from uh, Tidal Freediving, Ruben from Inner Limits, Ryan Rush, um, he's, uh, his business, he goes by Savage Diving when he posts stuff, but his company name is Dive Source, and, uh, I mean, this is a lovely place, but I would, I would love to share the location to everybody and all that, but it's just, it gets crowded. Sometimes there's, like, a couple weeks ago that on a weekday, on a Monday, there was literally 17 free divers and like 12 scuba divers. I mean, majority of us uses a cart, so you can only imagine how many carts was lined up on at that spring head. It was just, it was getting ridiculous. I was just glad everybody was able to stay organized and, and be respectful and try to stay out of everybody's way. But as soon as we uh, get there, we'll, uh, pull out the gear we'll talk about each piece of gear and this sport's really just a breath holding sport and uh, the reason I call it a sport because it is a sport and uh, you're breath holding all you really need in the summertime is just a, a mass snorkel and fins and a dive buddy of course but if you want to progress and get better it's always recommended to get a wetsuit to keep your body from getting cold because once your body starts shaking it'll start burning up more oxygen you'll learn all this when you take your first freediving level course and uh, a watch a, a freediving watch it's a very useful tool because you can actually log your dives and after you're done diving you can actually look back and see what the dive times are and what depths you was reaching and uh, more for you in a little bit, but I'm not able to pull the gear out and talk about each piece of gear just yet. And you really don't have to get all the gear right away. Just did what I do what I did. I'm, I've been freedom for like two and a half years. That's why I was able to get a couple wet suits and a watch and all this other gear that you really don't need, like a dive float. I mean, it's nice to have one. But if you're lucky enough like I was, you'll be able to have people that has drop on setups and just dive with them until you're able to afford it. Yeah, this place is beautiful. I love this swamp. There's snakes, there's alligators, and they've both been seen here. And this is pretty much all the gear that I have accumulated over the years. First thing I want to talk about, the most important thing, because obviously most people get into freediving so they can dive deeper so they're able to bottom out their favorite springs. 
is uh this is my personal mask it's a mars vapor no it's a mars viper i'm sorry it's a low profile mask that's the most important thing about free diving is getting a low profile mask because you want to have less air volume oh, huh. in the mask <laughs> And there's different types of brands and different designs of masks. So you should have no problem searching the internet looking for low profile volume mask. Just use those keywords, low profile free diving mask. And you shouldn't have a problem. And for the snorkel, you just want the basic snorkel. I, I, I got a teal color because it's really bright because I've lost a few snorkels in the past. Because sometimes I don't like having it connected to my mask. So when I do a dive, it's not really flapping around and, and creating a distraction for me. You just want to get the most basic, simple, cheap snorkel, J-hook snorkel. The cheapest one you can find because you don't really need no fancy snorkels. And, um, and, uh, Right here, these are my octopus fluid goggles. This is more for the advanced free divers out there. If you just want to just see the line and you're doing line diving, just training on the line, you literally fill the put them on and you fill them with water, and you're able to see through those little front little lenses. And uh, when you use goggles, you're definitely going to need goggle a nose clip. This is my octopus nose clip, just a basic standard nose clip. You can buy all this equipment right off the internet. No problem. You shouldn't have no problem finding it. And for fins, I have the fancy Acclimy V3s. I love them. I think they're sexy. I love the neon green. And of course, if you use fins, you're most likely going to want to use uh, neoprene socks. You can also, you know, Mars. There's different brands out there. Some people have preferences. I just usually try to get the cheapest neoprene socks because you don't really need nothing too fancy because it's just keeping your feet cold, keep, keeping your feet from getting cold and just making the fins a lot more comfortable around your feet. And for the wetsuit, you really don't have to have a wetsuit if you or just free diving in the springs in the summer or even the winter but for a better dive time and keep yourself from getting cold because once you start shaking like I said before once you start to shake you start to burn up oxygen and that's where the wetsuits come in in hand and I'll uh, shoot a little video of me when I'm dressed out in my free diving gear so you know what I look like and, and I've, of course this is my first carbon fiber fin I bought it's a mono fin I, the leader the the brand is leader fin you can see all the scratches so that's I mean if you're just getting into free diving there's no sense for you to get the fancy carbon fiber fins right away because you're not really going to need it I started off with the Cressy plastic fins you can get on Amazon for 130 bucks comes with the fin bag too you can't really beat the price I love those fins and the only reason I still don't have those fins is because they was just warped. And I figured I'll give them to one of my instructor friends so he can have them for his future students to use if they don't have any fins. And uh, that's why I don't have them no more. I'll eventually get another pair because I like my plastic fins. And that way it'll keep me from scratching up my pretty, pretty uh, alchemy fins or my of course my mono fan is just going to get scratched so whenever you do spend the money on some nice fans if it gets scratched don't be crying about it because it's going to happen eventually and don't say i didn't told you so start out in some plastic fins i was able to get 112 feet no problem with plastic fins and that's pretty much it on the fins and if you're wanting to first buy your first set of free diving fins just just do your research and and look the internet and just read the reviews. The reviews are there for a reason. And look up Cressy plastic fins. You'll see they're not a bad price. And after all, this is just a breath holding sport. So you don't let all this gear overwhelm you. You can get all this gear in a matter of a time period, you know, throughout the year or two. Then you'll eventually accumulate all this gear. And uh, for my mama fin, 
these are the socks that I have for my monofin. They actually came with my monofin. And they're just designed to go just on the front part of your feet to keep your toes and whatnot from getting blistering because the foot pockets are going to be tight around your feet. So that's why these are designed this way. And anytime you want to ask questions about gear, just hit me up on Facebook. My name's Mark Thompson. And and if you have Instagram, you'll probably have a better chance of getting a hold of me. Uh, my Instagram handle is springfreediver20. And just reach out to me and I'll see what I can do to help you out. And once you start diving with people, you'll get to start seeing everybody's gear and you can start asking them questions, what they like and what they don't like about their equipment. And of course, it's just a matter of time. Oh. And, uh, and of course, I got a nice free diving bag because you want to protect your investment. Lots of big pockets, lots of little clips. And my monofin, of course, I got a bag for my monofin. Nothing too fancy. And and when you uh, are able to, and if you're wanting to get into line diving more, I think line diving actually really helps with with my advancing in free diving. Like I said before, I'm a 47 meter diver. I'm not trying to brag. I love saying it though because you know I, I earned it. I've been tra training once a week, sometimes two or three times a week for this past for this past uh, two and a half years now. And this is pretty much what a drop on setup is consisted of. And when it comes to uh, line diving, like I was saying, this is pretty much just the basic cheapest Amazon float. Uh, you pretty much get what you pay for, but it's pretty much consisted of a, a rope, your, your desired length, and you got your clip. I just use a screw nut, little whatever you want to call it. I can't remember the name of it, but most people just use a, 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 a basic carabiner. And then this is the uh, octopus pulley. You can get this off the internet as well. I'm not going to name the prices and, and whatnot because I don't want to overwhelm you with the pricing. It's not super expensive if you just buy one piece here and there. I mean, after all, if you're going to want to get into free diving, you're going to eventually want to have all this gear so you don't have to rely on other people to bring it. And, and the next thing you want to put is your stopper, your plate, and your weight. Obviously, you're going to want to have a weighted line so you don't want to tie it off to something at the bottom because let's say you're having equalizing problems and you're not able to dive to that depth to untie it. And besides, when you're getting the deeper depths, you're not going to want to be down there to tie it off, especially if you're trying to go for a PB. Then you would literally would have to do a PB dive just to get your line set up. I just use the basic, cheapest dumbbell possible. Just a 20-pound a weight. I think 20 pounds is is perfect and then the proper distancing is you want to have one meter in between the weight and the plate and then you want to have one more meter between the plate and the stopper the purpose of the stopper is if you're clipped into uh, a lanyard let me grab this lanyard The purpose of the drop line is the uh, stopper is this gadget. See this clip? This clips onto the line like so. And then right here goes around your wrist or your ankle. And there's also lanyards that goes that's designed to go around your waist also. So if you're trying to do a, a certain discipline where it's just there in the waist and it's not on your hands or feet, that would be perfect. But I just like the basic wrist strap. That's all I need because I'm just focusing on free immersion right now. And free immersion is when you're pulling on the rope only, going down and going back up. And I'll go over the disciplines on free diving in the future. And that's this, this. And the stoppers are just pretty much designed to keep that clip away from the plate. So when you're reaching down to touch the plate, your lanyard isn't going to get wrapped around your plate or anything down below. That's the purpose of the stopper. And plus, it's nice to have a little notice bef 
before you hit the plate if you're focusing on the line. And and obviously, if you're going to wear a wetsuit, a neoprene wetsuit, it's really floaty. So you're going to want to be properly weighted at 10 meters where you're neutral. You're not going to sink or you're not going to float up. You're going to be neutral. You're going to stay there if you're not moving at 10 meters. That's 33 feet for everyone. And certain places that I dive, I'll wear just this two pound neck weight. It's perfectly weighted for this wetsuit. This wetsuit's a little old, so it thinned out. And obviously, I'll get into that in a little bit. And, and sometimes when I'm diving certain places, like warm mineral springs, I'll use the four pounds on the weight belt. And if you get a weight belt, it's always recommended to get a rubber weight belt where it's, it stretches. So you're able to pull it a little tight around your waist. So when you're down at depth and your body compresses a little bit from the air and the gases, it'll stay tight around your waist and it'll stay, still stay there. And yes, the wetsuits, they will eventually wear down. You'll get holes in them. They'll uh, thin out because all a wetsuit really is is neoprene. Neoprene is a bunch of pores little giant little a uh, whole bunch of thousands of little tiny air pockets so it's eventually it's going to compress and it's going to stay compressed so it'll eventually thin out and that's the type of neoprene that this wetsuit's made out of i mean it served its purpose i bought it off of uh dive source it was a pretty good deal for, i mean i got my money's worth out of it and yeah just like i said before don't let all this equipment you know, scare you out of freediving because this is a really great sport. And if you just buy like one thing once a, once every two or three months, you'll be fine. And this is my dive watch that I use. It's a Mars Smart Apnea. I love it. I can see literally everything that I need to see on the watch without pushing any buttons. I can even do my first dive and it'll automatically go in free diving mode. That's one thing I like about my watch. It'll show the recovery time. In the dead center of the, of the watch, it'll show the recovery time. And at the top, it'll show the dive, dis, you know, the dive distance, you know, the depth. It'll show the dive depth. And at the bottom, it'll flash to the dive time, you know, to the last dive time I did. And the most important thing that, that to be able to keep a track of is not your time of how long you do dove or it's not how deep you dove. The main important thing you need to keep a track of is your recovery time. The recovery time is when you first come up. You want to have a proper recovery time on your dives, in between your dives, so you won't, you know, overexert yourself and whatnot. But I'll explain more in another video on that subject. And... I like my watch. It's not too flashy. It's not too bulky. It is a little bit, but not. It's not really too bulky. And and having a free diving watch, you'll see your progression. You'll be able to log your dives. You'll be able to keep a track of how deep you di did, and what your uh, recovery time. You'll be able to keep up with your depths. You'll be able to keep a, a track of everything. And this watch here records up to two di two hundred dive sessions, if I'm correct. And I love it. And this is pretty much going to be my day today. I just got here. I'm waiting on my dive buddies. And that person right now is safety in. And that's the purpose of having a dive buddy. You always want to have a dive buddy just in case if you black out. That's the number one rule. And that will be the first thing you will hear from any free diver. If you say you're just getting into free diving. Well, I hope that would be the first thing they would say to you. Well, everyone, I hope you all enjoy my channel. And I hope this video on free diving gear helps you. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'll send a screenshot of my Instagram and my Facebook for you to reach out and get a hold of me. And like I said before, don't let all this... You don't have to have all this gear. This is a breath-holding sport. You just need just the basics. Just uh, fins, goggles, or, well, fins, mask. You can barely 
and a snorkel. It's really pretty much it. But if you want to get into free diving a little bit more, I got in, into line diving. That's the main reason why I got my drop line set up. And that's pretty much it. Just buy a little bit of gear here and there. You don't have to buy it all at once. I mean, that'll cost a decent amount. I'm not even going to tell you how much I spent on all my gear. And if you're going to remote spots like I am where it's a long distance, and if you got a decent amount of gear, get a cart. Definitely get a cart. It's well worth it. All right. Thank you for watching. And I hope you like and subscribe my channel to see more beautiful spots like this. And you can see how big this area is. It's not really that big. See all this water, but we don't usually go on the outskirts. We usually just focus right here in the center. So you can see 12 people overcrowding this place pretty easy. And the deck spacing isn't that much. That's all we got for deck spacing. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you think my content is valuable to you. After all, this isn't just an entertainment channel. This is also an educational channel on freediving. All right.